Rajeshwari MJ. She pursued her BE in Electrical and Electronics at the People's Education Society College of Engineering, Mandya. She pursued her M.Tech in VLSI Design and Embedded Systems at the Sri Jagadguru Balagangadharanta Institute of Technology, Bangalore. Her personal skills lie in good verbal and written communication skills. Her areas of interest lie in OOPS with C++, Renewable Energy Sources, HVDC Transmission, Digital Relays, Automotive Electronics, Advances in VLSI Design. She has also had papers presented at the national level such as the innovative architecture for SOC multi core hybrid processor presented at the RNSIT Bangalore. Welcome to UGC lecture series of BSc Applied Electronics. Today we are dealing with the subject television and engineering. Today we are going to discuss some of the topics in unit 4 color TV. The contents that we are going to discuss today are color television display tubes. In the previous session, we already discussed about this, the colored television tubes. One of the type that we already discussed is delta in gun color picture tube. So, the another two types that we are going to cover is precision in line color picture tube and trintron color picture tube. So, what are the difference between these two and how it works, how the arrangement of passports and the electron gun would be in these two will be discussed in detail. The next thing we are going to concentrate on color TV transmission and reception and our next topic will be bandwidth of color signal transmission. Finally, the formation of the chrominant signal. All these things will discuss in detail. First, we start with the color television display tubes and in that we are going to study in detail the precision in line color picture tube. Precision in line, the name itself tells that the arrangement of the gun here is in a line. The all three guns that is R, G, B will be in a line. That is why it is called as precision in line color picture tube. This is how the in line guns structure will be there. This is the outer line of an electron gun. This is three electron gun of R, G, B that is placed in line. The three tubes which will be placed in line is going to give us an uh, advantage. What is the advantage of placing uh, these three guns uh, in a line is the convergence will be adjusted easily. The convergence can be easily adjusted when we arrange the three gun in a line. So, this is uh, one of the advantages of precision in line. Next we move on to how these are the next process and the next screen and the passwords are arranged on a screen and what type of masks we are going to use. So, RGB are repeatedly along the screen, the passwords are arranged in a strips like vertical strips will be there. This is how the uh, passwords will be arranged, the vertical strips will be there for each colors. On this, there will be triads are placed, on the strips there are triads are placed in a line. So, whenever the beam ejected from the uh, gun, this electron beam will going to converge here in the mask. The mask that we are going to use uh, is here slot shaped aperture grill, where there is a vertical slot for each beam. So, the particular beam will be passed in a particular slot, so that no other electron beam will going to enter in that and no other and it does not matches to the another slot so that we can able to get beam for a particular passpass of color so that we can able to appear a desired color on the screen. So, this is how the slot will be and this is how the passpass may will be arranged that is on the vertical strips the passpass will be there this is how the RGB T different three different colors will be arranged in a precision in line. Since all the three electrons in line the center beam will be in the axis of a gun, axis of the gun will be of green color here. So, the problem of tilting and all that, that is in a delta in gun type what we did, the three guns are arranged in an equilateral manner, so that the convergence will be easily obtained at the mask, but here we need to tilt the left and right to get the convergence, so that R and B will be converged to get a convergent aperture at the mask. 
the slots in the mask are so designed the uh, slots will be designed in so manner each beam strikes its own passer and is prevented from landing on other color so that that is why we need to take care in designing the slots because this will going to cause a disturbance in picture if some other color may falls on the some other slots so and also the precision in line have is an efficient and it is having higher electron transparency than the uh, delta in gun and it also needs fewer convergence because of the in line structure this is what the precision in line color picture tube explains next we uh, move on to next type of color picture tube that is trintron this is the latest one and it is uh, invented by the sony corporation in 1970 but here we are concentrating on reducing the number of guns the arrangement of guns and manners of passports arranged we are going to differentiate into three color picture tubes but and here we are going to differentiate the trintron with the other two by it is having only one single gun in a delta and gun and a precision in line in line picture tube we are having three gun but here it is only single one which is going to make a uh, less cost and it is more efficient also than other two than the other color picture tube the uh, gun structure will be like this the tube neck will be this and the gun will be the three gun three b g r lines electron beams will be placed in a line only that is in a cathode line it is placed on a cathode line that is why the trintron picture tube is also called as a cathode in line picture tube so this will be placed on a single gun that this is how the gun structure looks and next we move on to passer the three passer triads are arranged in the same pattern like a vertical strips as in precision in line and the difference here is there is a metal aperture grill like mask is provided very close to the screen this is a metal aperture grill like mask will be there that is having a vertical complete vertical slots will be there not a, a, a specific vertical or some part will be open or not but here complete portion will be kept open and another will be have covered with the strips this is how the aperture grill will be in a uh, trintron color picture and it is having a vertical slot for each passer triads the grill is easy to manufacture here and has a greater electron transparency as compared to other two color picture tube and the three beams are bent by an angle that is bent by a uh, bend to uh, get a aperture so uh, we need a focus lens that is called as electrostatic lens using electrostatic lens we need to focus three beams on a, a mask so that it will converges here the beams that are commonly focus plane is sharper image and it is obtained with a good focus over the entire picture area so that if the beams will having a fo common focus plane means we will get a good picture so that the from the illustration of uh, uh, trintron color picture what we can say it is having higher transparency and convergence and it is uh, cost effective also because we are going to use single gun and it is uh, more uh, efficient uh, color picture tube that is why it is having a lesser adjustment also within it next we move on to color transmission and reception color transmission and reception takes part a very important role because after we get a luminance and chrominance signal we need to transmit is properly from the transmitter and also we need to receive the same signal in the receiver and we need to process accordingly with, without destroying any single information from the transmitter so we need to follow some of the standards for transmission and reception of a color tv signal what are the three standards that are following are the american ntsc that is american are going to use this kind of system that is national television system committee that, that is uh, organized by americans and the journal that are using pal phase alteration by line system the french secam the sequential colorist a memory system will be used by the french these are three countries which is having three different color tv transmission standards so uh, india adopted pal system for the 
color TV transmission and reception. Next, what does a color signal actually carries? The color signal actually uh, carries the hue and saturation information. So, this has to be properly extracted at the receiver and properly transmitted at the transmitter end. It is having hue and saturation. Obviously, the color TV signal is uh, complex in nature. It is very important to take care to pro demodulate and modulate all the signals without losing any lower frequency signal also. So, what is the compatibility here? Compatibility problem has been the compatibility problem will be there. So, that has to be overcome. So, uh, there will be a wide range of signal will be there. This wide of range of signal has to be carried with a subcarrier frequency. So, this has to be carried with a technique called frequency interleaving. The frequency interleaving technique used uh, to overcome the compatibility problem. That is the color TV signal can also be used by a monochrome system. So, that monochrome system should give a black and white picture when the color TV signal is received by monochrome system. So, the what do you mean by frequency interleaving? We will discuss in the next slide. For frequency interleaving creates a continuous wide band signal by summing multiple narrower band signals that overlaps in frequency. Obviously, all the signals that we get from the transmitter it is overlapped and it is somewhat merged and some of it having narrower band and some of it having higher band and lower frequency also. All this has to be self summed and multiplied and it has to be sent with a wide band signal. This technique is called as frequency interleaving. So, uh, how it has to be interleaved? This has to be separated and to be sent by a bundles. How it is sent? We can uh, learn this with the help of the figure. The composition of video information at multiple of line frequency can be shown in the figure where uh, horizontal line signal will be considered as an example. So, this is the fundamental frequency horizontal frequency FH. This uh, is the next the second harmonics 2 FH third harmonics 282 FH like that um, in continuous in the scale and it is possible for us to maintain along the with the color TV signal there should be a scanning signal also that is scanning frequencies uh, should be carried along with the video signal for proper scanning of the picture information. So, uh, this has to be sent in a separate bundle on the spectrum. Energy content of the video signal is contained in individual energy bundles. So, see each bundles will be having different different uh, energy and this energy is uh, measured with the amplitude. If it is having higher amplitude in the sense the bundle is having higher energy. If it is having lower amplitude in the sense we can say it is having lower energy and the harmonics of a line frequency will be vary like this 15625 that is what the fundamental frequency of horizontal line we know that from the earlier discussion 2 into this 15625 will give the 31250 like that the frequency harmonics will go on for different line. So, the component of each bundle being separated by a multiplier to the field frequency. So, it has to be um, separated by each uh, bundle has to be separated by a multiplier that is another frequency bundle should be there that is vertical line that is having a field frequency of 50, 100 like that 50 is a fundamental frequency, 100 is the next second harmonics, next will be uh, 150 like that it go on for a field frequency field frequency in the sense vertical sync frequency. Next the shape of each energy bundle shows a peak and this peak represents the exact harmonic of the horizontal scanning frequency. Lower amplitude excursions that occurs on either side of the peaks are spaced at 50 hertz intervals and represent harmonics of vertical scanning. So, whatever that we are going to observe here the first bundle will be horizontal adjacent to that will be the vertical will be present. The vertical side bands contains less energy than the horizontal because having its lower rate that is why the vertical bands will be having lesser energy. 
and the energy content will progressively decrease with increase in the order of the harmonic and is very small beyond 3.5 megahertz from the picture carrier. Here also we can observe from the interleaving of the color signal it shows all the color signals components that we can observe clearly the picture carrier having amplitude or which is placed across amplitude and frequency. This is the Y signal which is having chrominance information that falls between the Y signal and harmonics. Okay, this is the sound carrier information chrominance gives the color information of the color TV and here we can observe the field frequency and line frequency. So, that what I discussed um, in the previous slide that is there will be uh, for first one will be the horizontal one the location of a color sub carrier will be there on the sides will be the sub carrier in the middle will be the harmonics of a horizontal scan rate. This will be harmonics of a horizontal scan rate and the adjacent to that will be the subcarrier bands will be carried out and why this is 565 f h by 2 we, we will uh, discuss in the latest uh, slide. The color information is located by modulating the color difference signal with a carrier frequency called color subcarrier. We need a color subcarrier to carry the color information that is why it is called as a color subcarrier. So, the carrier frequency is so chosen that is sideband frequencies fall exactly midway between the harmonics of the line frequency. As I said it has to be in the midway of the line frequency. So, uh, it has to in between the line frequency there should be a two subcarrier frequency. The frequency of the subcarrier must be an odd multiple of half the line frequency this can be represented by like this 2 into 283 plus 1 and this is a fundamental frequency that is 15625 by 2 that gives to 4.43 megahertz. This is what they mentioned here this is what we need a sub carrier frequency. The sub carrier frequency is calculated in this way. This is a standard information for a PAL system. This is what the PAL system will use for a subcarrier frequency. Next how we are going to choose the bandwidth of a color signal. The bandwidth is plays a very important thing because the color or information and also the picture information and the sound information has to be kept in the same bandwidth. Otherwise it is very difficult for the transmission and receiver part to separate both of them. The Y signal is what we call as a luminance is transmitted with the full frequency bandwidth of 5 megahertz for maximum horizontal details in a monochrome. For very small details the eye can perceive only the brightness but not the color. So, uh, if the details are in the Y is very less very low that is uh, Y is lesser than 0 or somewhat uh, very small volume then the only thing that we observe is on uh, not a color only the brightness will be observed. The perception of the colors by the human eye which are produced by combinations of three primary colors is limited to objects which have relatively large colored areas. So, that is equal to 1 divided by 25th of the screen width or more. On scanning they generate video frequency which do not exceed 0.5 megahertz. So, when we are going to scan they generate a video frequency that should not be equal to that should not exceed 0.5 megahertz so that it has to be maintained uh, lesser than 0.5 megahertz. For fine color details produced by frequencies from 1.5 megahertz to 5 megahertz all persons with normal vision can see this is a range for which a fine color details can be easily viewed from the human eye. Therefore, maximum bandwidth necessary for color signal transmission can be obtained that is 3 megahertz that is plus or minus 1.5 megahertz. This is the bandwidth for a color signal transmission. Next modulation of color difference signal. So, how we need to in the in the transmitter part we need to uh, modify the color signal obtained from the matrix after the oscillator, oscillator will go into process the signal after oscillator we will get the in, into the amplifier where the signal is amplified from there we get the output of three different colors 
that has to be modulated with the modulator. So, what is the uh, difference between this modulator and previously used monochrome system modulator? Two separate modulator are used, one for B minus Y and other for R minus Y. There should be three color signals with the luminance Y we need to carry uh, two more information that is B minus Y signal and R minus Y signal. This has to be modulated properly. So, uh, there should be a carrier frequency for this. A carrier frequency fed to one modulator is given a relative phase shift of 90 degree with respect to other before applying it to the modulator. There should be a 90 degree phase shift between each modulator. This is important thing. The phase shift plays an important role in a color signal modulation. The two equal subcarrier frequency which are obtained from the common generators are said to be in quadrature and the method of modulation is known as quadrature. So, the subcarrier will be here in the quadrature. So, that is why the modulation here uh, called as a quadrature modulation. After modulation, the two outputs combine to yield C that is what we call as C the chrominance the resultant subcarrier phase of the amplitude of C chrominance signal correspond to the magnitude of a color different signal that is R minus P B minus Y chrominance signal will be C gives some amplitude of this color different signal and the instantaneous value represent color saturation at that instant. So, amplitude uh, will be the in, in indirect form it is a brightness and the instantaneous uh, value in the sense the saturation will be provided by the instantaneous value and the C the amplitude will going to provide as a brightness. So, the next thing is maximum amplitude correspond to greatest saturation. So, if the amplitude is more means there should be a greatest saturation and zero amplitude means no saturation that is it is half full white the picture will be appear as a white. Similarly, uh, we can uh, say here uh, if it is no saturation means the uh, chrominant signal is 0, if it is 0 means the signal will be having only Y. So, it is a monochromatic signal. Similarly, the instantaneous value of the C phasor angle theta which may vary from 0 degree to 360 degree this represents hue of the color at that moment. So, there will be u has to be vary from 0 degree to 360 degree at any particular degree if, if you point out uh, we will get a different u. Chrominant signal gives the information about saturation and u of various colors. So, here we can conclude that instantaneous value will give the saturation information and also the amplitude uh, will give the Q information so that in the chrominant signal we will get both saturation and hue information. So, from the figure we can easily understand the quadrature amplitude modulated color different signals and the position of resultant subcarrier phasor. So, here location of R minus B as I said this has to be in a 90 degree phase shift. This uh, subcarrier phase should be 90 degree phase shift but the resultant subcarrier should be in a quadrature that is theta is equal to tan inverse of r minus y b minus y and this equation c is equal to square root of r minus y whole square plus b minus y whole square this gives the chrominant signal and this gives whenever we substitute these two values we will get the chrominant information. The first expression, the first express R minus Y and B minus Y in terms of the three camera output voltages that is we obtain from the uh, one of the two output of the camera. So, that voltage R minus Y and B minus Y um, this is done by substituting like uh, Y is equal to 5.9 G plus 0.3 R plus 0.11 B in this uh, we are going to substitute R minus V then it becomes R minus V is equal to 0.7 R minus 0.59 g minus 0.11 b this is what the value of r minus y. Similarly, for b minus y also we will get 0.89 b minus 0.59 g minus 0.3 r. Suppose we want to watch only pure red means we are watching only pure red means how this uh, factors will be uh, going to means only is being scanned by the color only red color being scanned by the 
color camera this would result in an output the red color camera only while the green and blue outputs will be zero so we need to substitute b and uh, g b blue and green should be zero for this so therefore r minus y is equal to 0.7 r and b minus y is equal to minus 0.3 r substituting the, uh, this value that is g and b will be zero in this equation we will get plus 0.7 r only this part for r part and minus 0.3 r only r part in the b minus b the resultant phasor is counter clockwise always the resultant phasor that we get is it in anti clockwise the position of r minus y phasor here we observe from the figure this is what the for minus 0.3 and 0.7 and here the resultant will be plus r minus y that is counter clockwise that is 0.76 similarly this modulated color signals and the position of the resultant subcarrier phasor for the complementary also shown here this is for magneta this is the resultant subcarrier phasor that is 0.83 for magneta and for cyan it is 0.76 and for yellow it is 0.9 next we move on to important thing that is color burst signal this is also one of the type of the signal in a color sig uh, signal uh, spectrum it has to be carried with the along with the other information in a color signal the transmitted video signal does not contain the subcarrier frequency so it is necessary to generate it in the receiver with correct frequency and phase relationship for proper color get for proper extraction of the color sideband so we don't have any information regarding the this uh, carrier this frequency that is subcarrier frequency what kind of subcarrier frequency we need to give for the difference um, uh, color difference signal so this has to be carried with the color burst signal the color burst signal will going to give the information about the subcarrier frequency so a simple subcarrier oscillator of 8 to 11 cycles called a color burst is sent to the receiver along with the sync pulse uh, this is horizontal sync pulse this is 8 to 11 burst cycle which is sent along with the horizontal sync pulse which will going to help uh, and uh, give the information of subcarrier frequency in the receiver this having a located a back porch of the horizontal blanking pedestal this is what it is at the back of a horizontal sync pulse the color pulse does not interfere with the horizontal sync because it is having very lower amplitude compared to the horizontal sync pulse and also the color burst is gated out at the receiver and is used in conjunction with the phase comparator circuit to lock the local subcarrier oscillator frequency and phase with that at the transmitter so this is very in place a very important role uh, to get the information of subcarrier frequency at the receiver next is the weighing factors this is the most important thing for uh, visibility there should be a, a specific limit that is all the colors has to be in 100% uh, saturation so the peak to peak amplitude of green signal should be 0.83 gets added to the corresponding luminance amplitude of 0.59 this can be easily ob observed from the figure so for point uh, the cyan it should be what the 0.7 is a subcarrier burst that is of uh, having 0.7 will be the amplitude and the relative amplitude will be of uh, chrominance signal will be having 0.76 this is a y signal that is brightness will be having 0.7 and the relative video signal will be having 0.76 so what will be the uh, maximum amplitude the amplitude will be crossing here more than 0% and here it is more than 100% for blue it is going beyond a 100% this out of limit it is uh, not exceptional it is not acceptable so we have to uh, add some weighing factors to eliminate this kind of things so r minus y and b minus y components of the color video signal are scaled down so what we need to do means when we going to calculate the r minus y and b minus y the color different signal it has to be multiplied down multiplied them with what we called as weighing factor so we will get a reduced value those used are 0.87 for r minus y and the 0.493 for b minus y components these compensated value are obtained using the potentiometer so potentiometer will going to give a particular uh, 
weighing factors for r minus v and b minus y for down multiplying it. So, we will come to the end of the session. Let us have a summary. The PIL will be having three tubes that are arranged in a line, a horizontal line and all the in a PIL uh, the color phosphors are deposited on screen in the form of vertical strips in triads RGB which are repeated along the breadth of this tube. Trintron is another type of color picture tube which is having single gun three in line cathodes it is having a simple construction very efficient having high electron transparency and it is also having three phosphor triads and it is arranged in vertical strips. Lastly, we discussed about video uh, signal and it is having two independent information that is hue and uh, saturation. The compatibility problem that is what we earlier discussed in this unit uh, it will be easily overcome using frequency interleaving. The questions of this session are described with the suitable diagrams the gun arrangement and construction details of the PIL color picture tube, describe the suitable diagrams the gun arrangement and construction details of Trintron color picture tube, explain the modulation of color different signals, how does the chrominant signal form, explain how by frequency interleaving the color information is accommodated within the same channel bandwidth of 7 megahertz, explain with the block diagram how both B minus Y and R minus Y signals are combined around the same subcarrier frequency by quadrature modulation. For reference, you can refer the website engineeringtv.com, tvtechnology.com. Textbook reference are basic television principles and television and video engineering. This ends the session. Thank you. Mm -hmm.